Okay, so you and I obviously love all things Fender. We do. We are like Fender junkies, but there's other guitars that are very similar to Fender. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, other, been, there are other guitars, yes. We've been talking about it for the past hour, just like, and then Derek finally decided to press record, and I guess um, we're talking to you now about um, your boutique guitars out there. Boutique. And, it's a funny word. It's like part caster versus boutique Ooh. is what's kind of come up a lot too. And um, we're fans of a lot of these boutique things, but yeah, we've man. gotten a lot of queries and questions and comments come in from our, um, our base out there and our customers just asking or saying like, hey, I'm a little bummed out. I found out this boutique guitar I bought was actually kind of a parts caster that was sort of tooled and tweaked. And then we're going to kind of break into that a little bit. Disclaimer, we sell none of these things we're about to talk about. So. That is funny. We, we were laughing about that earlier. It's like, we don't sell any of these guitars. We just like them. I have some, and you've had some. Yeah. Um, like, we bought them. We've traded them. We might still have some. Like, I'm a boutique amp nut. Yeah, like, man. Like, people hear me talk about, like, I love Two Rocks. Guess what? We don't sell Two Rocks. We, no. Eli, thanks. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, we love Two Rock amps. And, like, I love car amps, too, Steve. Um <laughs> But again, they can't build them fast enough to open up new dealers, even though we're not a new dealer. We've been around for years. Eh, what are you going to do? Steve and Eli. Anyway, back to guitars. So let's talk about boutique versus parts caster. Okay. What separates those two things? I think, so like when you're talking about a parts caster, we're obviously talking about, you know, someone who they, they source the necks and the bodies from somewhere. Maybe they source all the hardware and the pickups and the magic is sort of... <laughs> I know, whatever. The magic Sorry, is in. I was still thinking about Two Rock. I was like, man, I'm going to call him when we get off this. <laughs> I'm him. Expect a phone call. Continue. Um, but you know, so they take all the parts. They're not making them. They're getting them from somewhere, USA, CG, or, or wherever, you know, Warmoth. Putting them together. They're amazing setups. Sometimes they're doing the relic. They're doing the finish thing. And then Boutique, they're actually maybe shaping or, you know, hand carving the necks. They're carving the bodies. Maybe right. they wind their own pickups. Whatever. Well, it's, it, boutique is a strange word too, because yeah. like I have a lot of people say, well, boutique is only if you have a shop of like five to ten guys or, or ten to twenty guys. It can't be Fender or PRS, can't be or Collings, can't, can't be, be boutique. boutique. I'm like, I don't. I think Collings is still pretty boutique, even though they've got, you know, those are large operations. It's a larger operation. It's down yeah. there in Austin, but and I would even say some the fact that PRS carves every body of the, all their USA made stuff in the Stevensville factory. Right. It's, I don't know if it's boutique, but it's they're doing the same thing in a larger mass scale, right. but it is everything is built, and we can even say Fender too. Like those little Telecaster and Stratocaster bodies are all routed, carved, sanded out in their factory. Anyway, at, at Fender. Sorry, just diverging. You continue now. <laughs> so I guess what we're what we're trying to answer, what we're trying to talk about, and what we want to hear your your thoughts on in the comment section is: Is it more important to you? to have a guitar that is handcrafted, the neck is shaped, you know, by hand, where it's all put together, you know the guy that you paid to build it did all those things, or do you just want the finished product that looks amazing, that is assembled and, and set up to perfection, and you don't care where the neck and the parts come from? That's sort of, that's, that's, that's a good in my setup. brain, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's the, the choice. That is our premise. That's our premise, our let's, hypothesis. Let's, let's go forth with that. And like, let's talk about some of the makers that you're familiar with and that you've you've had on. Like, I mean, we'll start with Nash. Nash is the one that I've had the most experience I've with. I've seen a lot of Nashes. I have owned a lot of Nashes. I have seen a lot of Nashes, played a lot of Nashes. And they're cool guitars. I like them. And I was sort of shocked. I, this is like years ago when I sort of learned about Nash and learned about the boutique market. So it's, it's been in my brain for a bit. But when I, I thought they built all the parts. Nope. And... I just assume that in guitar world that you, if you are X brand, you build this. And then the wool was, the curtains were pulled back for me, I guess. And I was like, oh, they can oh, just yeah, buy oh, parts yeah. and put them together, which is, continue. A parts caster. A parts caster. If you will. But is, I mean, you know, that word is like sort of almost derogatory. I know, and we don't mean <laughs> it that way. It's no, but I mean, you know, he, he's not at all sort of shy about saying that he gets his necks you know, from, from, I think a couple of different sources, but he goes through, he picks out the best pieces, you know, the woods he thinks are the most resonant and then all of the, the aging, that's him. Right. And then I think when you buy a Nash, you're really getting like sort of his touch on the setup and, you know, obviously the look of it, his pickup combinations. And um, what about MJT? So MJT, I mean, for the longest time you could get all your sort of cool relic parts from MJT, but I think they have now merged with a, it's USA GC, 
And so MGAT is almost like the sort of custom shop. Like if you get those parts, okay. MJT will do all the cool relic finishes. So if you were building or you or I were building our own parts caster, we wouldn't because it would be horrible because we would put it together. But uh, not really. We'd probably do okay. But it wouldn't be a Nash or a, you know one of these other cool cool parts casters. But anyways, we could get our own relic bodies, our own relic necks, make our own guitar. And it would it would look like a relic okay. fender ish instrument. And you say that like and we and this is something that comes up with our shop at least once uh -huh. a month, probably once every two weeks. Somebody comes in and like we think it's awesome. They come with a guitar yeah. that they put together themselves. And like and we play and like this is this is really cool. I, I'm I'm very impressed that you could do that and it plays pretty well and it's that's awesome. Then it, <laughs> and I've all, got ten more in the trunk. <laughs> I was gonna, at least ten more in the trunk. You want to buy some? How much how much will you pay for these? I'm like oh. Uh, well, I know how much you paid for it. I can't even pay you that much, but I want to make a profit. I'm like, but we can't. If you're building a guitar yourself, do that for pleasure. This is a whole different thing because these guys are craftsmen and they're putting a new spin and making them better and putting great pieces. Like that leads us to probably one of the more famous guys that guy builds those guitars for Brad Paisley. I believe his name is Mr. Bill Crook. Those are pretty cool guitars. He he's he's a cool dude because. If you like, I, I I heard an interview with him one time where he actually said his his sort of love for like building those guitars and what he puts into them comes from being a sound guy. Oh, cool! From standing at the board and everything he heard in, in guitar players' guitars that he was like having to cut out of the mix. So when he builds guitars, he he has in mind like what the sound guy wants to hear that's, on stage. That's a useful like. Sort of like theory on building a guitar. And I feel like it is too, but so, but he's not shaping necks. You know, he's getting parts just like the Nash stuff. Now he, I will say that his finishes, like the Paisley stuff he does. I mean, I don't know that there's many people in the world who do those cool wallpaper Paisley finishes as well as 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 he does. So no, I mean, I mean you there, know, there's an argument that like he's better than Fender at it. And so, well, I mean that, and then all the sparkle finished stuff he does. I mean, he he really is fantastic at it. Um, and I mean, there was that thing a while back where he restored the pink paisley that somebody had painted black. Yeah, it wasn't that Brad's? Yeah. Okay. They didn't even know it was a pink paisley. And he put it back to sort of like pristine, then relicked it. <laughs> it's such a confusing world we live in. Um, I mean, before we jump but, uh, on to the, the guys that make everything from scratch, like, I I tend to be okay with any of what we just talked about. Me too. I, I'm a hundred. I just want to play the guitar. I think the only time I would not be okay is if they were trying to pass it off as not that. Like they were saying, oh, I, you know, if you felt like they, you were getting these hand shaped necks, and then you find out, oh, they're from Warmoth or they're from MJT. Eh, maybe and that's and different. They, they don't put that in their catalog online. Obviously, they it's sort of no. But it's, it's easy to. It's pretty easy for most of them to to find. You know, you know at the end of the day, like out. I don't really care. Like, yeah. I just want a guitar that plays great. I'm okay with that. Sounds great. I'm, I looks me. cool. Yep. But um, but let's get on some of these other guys that are that are pretty impressive too. Then maybe maybe it'll change my mind. You never know. I'll start seeing you in the pasture with the boutique rabbit hole. I've already done that in the amps. I, think, I, I just bought I bought like a top hat the other week. Like, what are you doing? I'm like I, I just needed I just one need, more. I just need it. Just one more. Hand. I mean I had even like, it's not a boutique, but I remember Jonathan was coming home from a road gig <laughs> once, and and I was like, hey, do you mind stopping by? To pick up this one amp for me on your way home, he's like, he's like, well, where is it? I'm like, it's in Nashville. He's like, that's like four hours out of my way. I'm like, yeah, but but I did it. He did it <laughs> because that's the kind of guy. And it's, it's it's a Brian May Vox AC30. I always with the one knob. I always wanted one. It it's, is it is really it's, cool. I mean, it's kind of useless for it's a lot of things. Totally useless. But it's it's just it's got one knob on it and the big red top. Anyway, so I, I got. I got problems. Thanks, Jonathan, for that. I You're appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. I'd forgotten I even did that. Yeah, that was, that was a little go. bit of a diversion. Um, okay, so boutique guitar builders. So these are the guys. They are pretty much making their neck and body from scratch. They're routing out the bodies. They are shaping the necks. Um, I think you'll find most of these guys, or at least a higher percentage of their guitars, are not relic. Right. And I think it's probably because they're taking pride in their, you know, like, I put this together, fit and finish, it's it's sort of perfect. Well, I, I think probably cost ratio, too, is like, I mean, you already you already have a fairly expensive instrument here. I'm just going to say an expensive instrument. With, with oh, labor. Every, yeah. With labor and the new material, like, the one you start adding relics, because relics in the Fender world, like, you can spend, you can have your guitar, and then when you go to the higher level of relics, you can spend up to $800. Totally. You know. Easy. In, yeah. In the custom shop world. That's not even getting into master build. That's, That's true. That's a whole other 
Bowl a game. whole a whole different same world. charges but a different yeah. game. Anyway, continue. So let's talk about Ron Kern first. Yes. So he makes really cool sort of tele style guitars for the most part. He's really active on TDPRI, which is the big Telecaster forum. Um, he actually answers a ton of questions and chimes in. Which My is wife is cool. really active there. Is she really active. <laughs> I was going to ask her screen name. <laughs> but uh, so Ron Kern, he builds like barn, these barn buster guitars out of this old sort of reclaimed barn wood, which are uh, really cool looking. He was one of the like top five builders to know in Premier Guitar for, for Tele style, uh, you know, custom builders. And, and you know, he builds I think they're really cool. Stuff. I think they're super cool. I, I like the look. I love when, even like when Fender or any of these, Ron does like anything out of reclaimed woods. I think it's just neat. The Penny Bridge one that I think Todd Krause built for a custom shop a couple years ago, where there was a, in, from Dublin. I thought that was just neat. That's I would have liked cool. to have had a bridge that tens of thousands of people had walked over. Now it's my guitar. And... So we got Ron Kern. Another big one is Jeff Sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell me. So Jeff Sin, I know you know how much I love Tom Bukovac in his uh, homeschooling videos. You do love Tom a lot. It's a little bit <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's odd. Um, slightly obsessed. He has a but... Tom stuffed animal. It's yeah. weird. Hey, whatever. As you watch that. Um, just hold it and stroke its hair. Um, so he makes all his own necks. And he's sort of, I, I think he's, you know, pretty pretty entrenched in Nashville and in that session community. A lot of those guys play his guitars. I know that Tom says that his guitars are quiet, even though they're, uh, you know, single coil Fender style guitars. Okay. They're, they're quiet. They do well in the studio recording. They do well in Tom's garage where he doesn't have the greatest, you know, electrical. It is funny that Tom shoots but. everything from his garage, right? I, I, just, I love that. It works. But he's got, I mean, like, Keith Urban has his guitars, Jed Hughes, he's built guitars for John Fogarty, he's built guitars for, like, the dudes from the Wallflowers. So he's he's doing a lot of stuff. And he, I, but I believe you can get relics and non relics from okay. Jeff. So, which is, you know, which and we're is relic cool. fans, so we kind of like a little soft. And dirty. then there is, <laughs> there is Han. Han, we love Han. Han. So Han is cool. He makes the same kind of deal, but he, some of his stuff seems like it's a little more. It's like quirky, some of the stuff, the fin like the gold foil pickups, and it well, looks a little more it's like... It's almost like 50s. retro 50s. Yeah, 50s, like a sort of Dan Electro and, uh, and a Fender had a baby. Like a, a really bit. nice Dan Electro. Yeah. Your baby. I mean, they're still Fender-y, but yes. Um, so those, I, I guess those would be my sort of top. They build all the parts. And they're, I mean, they're priced all over the place, too. They are. They, there's a, a fair range from sort of, you know... A bit less than Fender Custom Shop to, in into master built almost sort of territory, you know. And and we particularly chose to stick with sort of the bolt on categories. Yeah, we're sticking like, in the Fendery. We didn't want to enter world. into because like, once you enter into like the set necks, like we were talking about before, it, it does become it opens yeah. up a bag of worms. And because like I'm I'm a huge Collings fan as well, and that's like, as I mentioned earlier, that's I feel like that's a different. It's hard to have a parts caster, so to say, because it's I mean you know the caster. idea of. I mean, and we talked about this too, you and I. That I mean, sort of the whole vision of Fender was was a parts caster. That if you he mess is up the an originator egg, of the parts caster. So, so I mean, that the fact that that has become sort of a weird derogatory. No, because like our love of Fender does not at all like dismiss the idea that we love when people put guitars together. Just don't sell them for profits unless you've known really what you're doing. Unless you've done it for years, like these and dudes. These guys, and you're amazing and. People, for some reason, are going to want you to do that. But no, we love it. We love the idea that, you know, Leo came up with the, hey, break a neck and get a new neck. You know, and Fender sells their parts online directly or, or their through license, their dealers. you know, yeah. And it, yeah, so it's like, what do you think, though, when you get to the end of, like, so we talked about these guys. Like, if you're, you've never had any of, like, our guys that have built stuff from scratch, scratch. I've only, yeah, I mean, to me, it's kind of like what you said. It really comes down to how's the guitar feel? How does it play? How does it sound? Any of these, if I picked them up and loved them, I'd, I'd be comfortable with. I don't think that the, it's not really a factor for me. Hey, did this guy build it for parts or did he shape the neck? For me, it's all, uh, okay. do I love this guitar when I have it in my hands? Yeah, I'm terrified to play some of these because I know I would love them. And it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a problem because like, I don't want my love for anything that I love, like the Fenders and the Gibsons, to diminish at all. <laughs> I will say this, and this might make me sound vain or petty, but there's still something about looking down and seeing... Fender. No, I do like that. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. But I will say, like one of our dear friends, he when he brings his Gil Your Owns by the the Gibson. Oh yeah. The, 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 I mean, those are like the best. Les they're balls crazy good. I've almost ever played. They're crazy expensive, but they're amazing guitars. I mean, I was looking through like the dumb Facebook memories yesterday. There's a couple of my Nashes I really miss. I really like to have. You know, it's like oh yeah. 
<laughs> I used to have this one with the Bigsby on it, Telly. He, did, he sold some great Nashes. That, but, you know, like, that's part of the guitar fun, too, is like the, we like to trade our gear, Constantly, yeah. get new toys. Um, so. I was going to say something that my wife would get really mad about, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to continue <laughs> on with my guitar. I mean, what do you guys think? I was going to say, end of the day, it doesn't matter what we think. So we really, really want to hear in the comments, do you guys have experience with these builders? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Would you rather have a Fender? Do you care if it's a parts caster? Does that even enter into your mind? I'm still not even sure if it's fair to call some of these other guitars a parts caster. I mean, it's, so. it's not. I mean, it's, it's, that's just a word that's become part of our, in our lexicon through like yeah, talking about, again, exactly. like, and we just called Fenders parts casters too. Because they like, essentially the, are. The mod shop is a perfect <laughs> example of that on Fender. You go to the mod shop, you design your guitar, they, they grab the parts out of, you know, racks and shelves, yeah. all their body. Roasted Done. maple neck all of a sudden, boom. You know, the hand-wound Texas, you know, special pickups, bam. When you think about the fact that Blackie and Brownie, both of Clapton's famous strats were, they were parts casters from a barrel. I know. <laughs> he was like, oh, okay, and smack. And even like, you know, David Gilmore is like, all the, like, the mods on that, like these are the most famous. Parts you know, casters. Oh, that was the most expensive strat to ever mm -hmm. sell. And it's, you know, casters. theoretically, it's, it's not even that, that great of a year of a strat. You know, it's right. just funny. Um, it matters what you do with your fingers. That's it. That's what I'm on. I need to practice more. Let's go practice. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Let us know what you think. Click like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get all of our ridiculous videos that come out. We shall see you next time. Um, 2020, funny year. See you guys later. <laughs>